to understand that you don't have to solve your problem. All you must do is get him in the midst of them. Just start praising him until, he, until his presence start making a difference in your situation. Right. Then you have total prosperity, total quietness in spirit, and total union with God. Yes, sir. Some of you are stressed this morning or depressed today. And you desperately need God's presence. You need his peace and calm in place of the anxiety and struggles you have been going through. Tylenol, sleeping pills, or any depression drugs won't give you this peace. They cannot fix you, even if you feel better for a short time, right. the pills, my brothers and sisters, the pills soon wears off, right. and you will be right back where you were before you took them. Instead of reaching for pills, why don't you ever now and then reach for Jesus? Pills just deal with the symptoms of the problem. God deals with the root. When his presence is in your life, your struggle and anxiety are replaced with his peace and rest. So stop for a few moments and lift your minds and hands to Almighty God. Praise Him for the good thing He has brought you and brought into your life. I know you may not feel like praising Him sometimes, but now is the time to make your will, my friends, take control of your emotion. Thank Him for the gift of peace he has for you. Thank him that he is in control of your life. Church, thank him for his concern for you and his never-ending faithfulness to you. Thank him that he's never leave you or forsake you. Just bring, my, bring him and his sacrifices are praise until you sense his presence in your spirit. Thank my friend him and bathe yourself in his love and his tender care for you. We worry so much because we think that we have to fix everything. God is the one who fixes things, not us. Right. Our responsibility is to make the, my friends, condition right so he can come and do his work. When we make room for him through praise, he comes in and takes over. This is why protecting God's presence in our life is absolutely essential. In essence, we are protecting ourselves by making room for him. As soon as, listen careful, as soon as we become aware of anything that is disrupting his presence, be that in our personal life or in our life together as God's people, we must activate praise and make change over whatever is threatening us. Our peace of mind demands this. Church, as we fight for God's presence, being zealous to guard it 
we will find that our normal moments of crisis and turmoil become less frequent because God is in our environment all the time to bring us peace. Yes, I, I remember when the, my late uh, wife was in the hospital and, and uh, the doctor was, made a statement to me. He said, well, I'm, I'm more than sure she is dying. I said, I know. Thank you. And he said, uh, I'll be right back. So he came back and he had a, a bottle in his hand. And he says, uh, I suggest that you take a couple of these every two hours so you can be calm. And this would help you during this crisis. All right. I said, Doctor, thank you very much. But I've already had some this morning. <laughs> uh, he said, you had some pills this month? I said, oh, yes. I said, the one I have, I didn't see them. Yes, sir. I just know the results from them. And so he looked kind of strange. I'm sure he thought I had lost it. And I said, Doctor, here's what I'm saying. I said, I learned before this happened that there is another source. Right, and it is not the pill bottle. Right. It is Almighty God. Yes. Yes, and he said, well, that, 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 that's, that's a good way to feel. I said, no, that's a good way to know. Because yes, you see, you can't, feel, you, you, you can't see God. I told him, you can't see God. You can't see him, but you can feel him. Yes. Now, now, some of you all, you don't like to talk about this. I I'm never, let me just put, put, put your hand in front of you. All of you, put your hand in front of you. Put your hand in front of you. Now blow. Do you see it? No. Blow again. You see it? No. Well, but do you, do you feel it? Yes. Well, that's what I mean, that you don't see the Holy Ghost in me. But every now and then, the light comes on. And when the light comes on, I don't see him, but I feel him. And I know there's power because the light's already on. And I don't have to turn it off. It'll go off on its own when it gets through doing his work. So I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't let nobody fool you. Don't let Mr. Cutie and Mrs. Mrs. Cutie take you from out of the will of Almighty God. I know for myself, if you learn how to give it to him and then leave it alone, he'll work it out. Well, now help me, Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, listen to me, careful. Without God's presence, we always looking for help. With his presence, our souls are at rest and our labors are easy. We find true peace by, uh, my friends, avoiding the struggle before it began. I was talking to someone last night uh, from the East Coast, and they were saying to me, he said, well, you know, sometimes I can't sleep. And I said, what, the, what are you doing about that? He says, well, what I'm doing about it, a relative of mine, what I'm doing about it, when I can't sleep, I get up and sit in the chair, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, and I read some scripture. Then I meditate. When I find myself the next morning, I've gone to sleep in the chair. See, it's not her. She got her mind off, I can't sleep. Put her mind on what Jesus said in the Word. And when she knew anything, it's that quiet voice that helps her to relax and go to sleep. She don't call her friends some of the biggest problems you have ever had in your life and ever will have. Every time something comes up, you call your friend. What do you think? They don't know what to think because they're not you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. I was talking to a young man who was uh, supposed to get his master's this summer. And uh, he missed the class. That he found out he, he had missed the class. And so he was all upset because he got to take this class before he get his master's. I said, young man, why are you worrying about taking one class when you've gotten everything else ready to go? He said, I don't want to go through that one class. So I said, well, stop and think. If it had not been for somebody paying for you taking the other classes, you wouldn't be here with this class. 
See, sometimes we forget what God has done for us back here and we worry what's going on up here. Well, I said, now here's what you do. You, you go back to your college and tell them you worked in this field for 20 years. And is there any way you can get any credit for what you have done already? You teachers know he went back. They said, oh, yeah, we can give you credit. And you don't have to take the class over. See, he was listening to his friends. Help me here, Holy Ghost. Friends, friends means well in some cases. But they're not you. Let me give you another test. test, test. You didn't get that one. Let me give you this one. When I first came to California, we was... We came here, and I came here in May, and my family came here at the end of June, and at the end of July, I was looking for a home to buy. And people sent me to three places, and I don't want to name them, because I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying. When I went to all of them, I, I, t- I told the, 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 uh, the realtor, I said, turn around, I don't want to get out. <coughs> I don't, I said, no, let's go somewhere else. I went to another area. If we got there and I was starting down the street, I said, oh, no, 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 we don't, we, we, we don't want to get out. We, let's, let's go somewhere else. I went to another place, and uh, when, I, when we entered the area where we were, there was too many people on the street. Oh, it was at least 50 people just out clowning and carrying on. I told him, I said, just keep driving. <laughs> keep driving. Now, God had given to me in a vision a house that I could buy before I came here and the color of it. So since I didn't get out, other folks said, but this is, this is a good area. That's fine for you. But for me, no. I never lived in an area like that. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you the truth. Before I moved in Chicago, I would take a day off and go in the neighborhood, see how many people are hanging on the street. And if any of a lot of people on the street, we didn't even go to look for a place. You said, but, but why didn't you do that? I wasn't raised around a lot of silliness. And so what happened was, I came back, on my way back, to go home. The realtor was driving. I was in the front, and my late wife was in the back. We passed the street. Here's a lady coming out of the house and had a, something in her hand, driving a sign, says house for sale. I said, stop, stop here. He stopped. I, I said, we got out and went in. Not for me. I would never do this. I know what you said. I didn't, I didn't say I like it. I said, honey, what do you think? She said, I like it. If she like it, then I would love it. Now let me blow your mind. I got that from Ephesians. The Ephesians book says, according to Paul, now you ladies ought to bring me something down here and throw it on the floor when I get through. <laughs> Ephesians says, that's what it says, it, it talks more to the man than the woman. The man, if there's anybody going to become partially of a slave right. in the marriage, it's the man. Preach. Say amen here. Preach. Open your mouth. He, he's the one. Right. Men, some women misinterpret the scripture when it says that a, that a woman is to do what to her? Right. Submit. They misinterpret that. Right. If they would interpret the Bible correctly, they would be happy. Before he told her to submit, what did he tell you, Bathfield? Submit. Just as he submit to me, you submit to him. And I interpret it, if there's no submitting from him, then I don't need to submit. Preach. Preach. And so what happened was, she loved the house, and so the lady said, we are divorcing, and we want to sell our house. And so I said, she told me what she wanted. I said, oh, no, we can't do that. I can't pay you that. Uh, I said, we'll give you. This is what I'll give you. I said, if you knock off $2,000, i will buy it. She said, I can't do that. I said, well, then let's, we'll go. We went outdoors. I was living with my brother-in-law. And wasn't paying no rent. 
What happened? I went to step away. She said, well, come back. She was an attorney. Richard, so I says, if you write the papers up, I'll give you 2500 down. And then you will put the other through a mortgage company. She said, oh, you can do that? Fine. Then some other people said, well, what if your job play out? You just got here. I wouldn't buy no house now. I said, thank you. I've been here five years and I haven't bought a house yet because I haven't got a study job. Thank you. Uh, so y'all going to move in this house? Yes. When? Well, I hope you like it. We stayed there until we moved in the part of the zone in Tahoe's Park. If I'd have listened to these people's suggestions, right, right, right. I'd have spent the money on a, what you call those things you all buy? Cars look like vans. I know what it is, SUV, I wanted to get your mind on it. I didn't listen to anybody. And then the lady knocked off the money that I asked her to do, and then when she said, when she finished, I said, now, to, to the realtor, I said, you need to give me part of your, what, you, what he gets? Commission. He said, well, what do you mean by we'll give you part? I said, well, we, we're going to give X number of dollars on the house. And he said, well, I don't think I can do that. I said, no problem. We'll get a, our own realtor. Since you're riding me around, you don't want to give me part of your commission. Then I won't let you purchase it through your sale. So he said, well, okay then. He said, he said, he said okay. And he, he, and he gave me part of his commission. So when I got back in the car, and he was, well, I tell you, he, he was uh, Japanese. And I got back in the car, and I lifted my hand in that car. And I said, thank you. Praise your name. I got what you told me because I followed what you gave me. I'm trying to tell you something that you miss your blessing. You don't have to walk around poor. When God have you rich, all you got to do is learn how to get it. Amen. Listen carefully here. You keep praying. I'll be through in a minute. But don't I finish the next Sunday? God's presence. No, Jesus says, take my yoke up on you and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you would find rest for your soul. These people were having problems with all of the laws that was steeped up on them. And some of you are keeping the law now. You don't need to keep no law. You're not under the law. You're under grace. Uh, a young boy came down last year during the appreciation that you all gave me, and he gave me a piece of paper. It was folded up, and, uh, and he sneaked under the crowd, and and I, was, I recognized him because he was young, a youngster. And so I was looking at him so I could remember. I didn't know his name. And when I got home, I looked at it. And in the note it says, he says, I love you. You love young people. So I found him the next Sunday. He was eight, he was eight years old. So I said, I can't take your, your dollar. That's all you have. He said, oh, no. No, Pastor, not all I have. He said, I've been saving this for you. He said, you, 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 you take time to speak to us, children. He said, when the, well, I, I don't want to quote the other word he used, but he, but he was right. He said, uh, well, let me quote it. He said, some of the older people don't want, us, don't want us to come up there. I said, well, next time you come like you did, don't, you don't know about no money. Just come and you want to speak. So I read the note. He says, I love you because you love young people. I said that, that to you to tell you, that's what happened to Jesus. The old folks tried to stop him. Yes, 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 yes. Telling Jesus, you know, don't bother those young kids. Jesus said, look, get away from me. Don't forbid the young people to come. Now let me shock you, church, today. Many of you have no patience and no understanding for young people. And the reason you have it, you don't know the scriptures. 
If you really knew the scriptures, you wouldn't be like that. Uh, Josh, you're from the, the country. Uh, you just got lucky to be in the city. Uh, you remember, Josh, that everybody that lived in the country wasn't poor. Some of y'all think that all of us come out of Mississippi, we was hungry. I've never been hungry a day in my life. What happened is Jesus, listen, Jesus Christ was a young man. And he did not run with old people. <laughs> Come here, Jesus. Talk to me. Read the history of John. Search the record. Read them. The people he... And let me, let me come to you again. In the book of Acts, it was not the older people that turned the world upside down. It was the younger people. You're not listening? I'm not against older people, but I'm saying to you, it's room for everybody. Not some people, but for everybody. Amen. Well, let me come again. You didn't get it. Paul did not close his ministry with an older man. You don't hear me. He closed his ministry with Timothy. He said, boy, you've been trained. You know God for yourself. Now you need to teach that. And he said to the elders, leave him alone. He's going to pastor this church. Amen. I just said yesterday, that the gentleman was talking to me. I went to a meeting yesterday, and I was saying, he was talking about the pastor. And he, I said, there's only one. He said, well, in our church, they got about seven, eight pastors. I said, that's not true. You got seven, eight titles. No church can have eight pastors. And anybody tell you that they're lying? You think God is that messy? When there's enough problem with one? And he's going to give you eight? Those are titles given to those people by that pastor. So I told him, I said, don't you treasure that. You work with it. Who is your senior pastor? And he told me, he said, well, I never heard it like that. I said, well, you need to read the book of Acts. I'm telling you this. Don't be a Christian 40 years and pour as Joe's turkey with all of the blessings you have. All right. I hear you getting quiet. Well, let me come back here. All right. God's presence attracts the right people. Once we are in, at peace with what's happening in our lives, we can trust God to bring the right people and the right opportunities our way. In fact, we would find that miracles are more abundant, friend, when we stop trying to do everything in our own strength. People are attracted to us because they are attracted to God. Moses evidently knew this. Listen to what he said. He says, if, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people? That's what Moses said to God. Unless you, my friends, go with us, what else will, my friend, distinguish me and your people from all of the other people in the face of the earth. Exodus 33, 15 through 16. Your life should be distinguished because God hangs out with you. Every now and then people call, what you doing? I'm hanging out with Jesus. That means you're going to spend some time with him this morning. Church, God is with you. People are drawn to you and they don't know why. They, are, my, they see something they can describe and feel something they can't understand. They know something is going on. I thank God this morning of all of the things I've seen in my life. There's nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, when I look at it, blessed are those uh, you who choose to bring near 
your counsel to the courts of God. We are tempted to think that the good things of God's house are material things. Although God may suddenly bless us with prosperity, the good things of God are the essential qualities of his character, such as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We can attest to the goodness of God in our life when we start to look and act as he does and fulfill this purpose in us. Thank him today for all that he has done. Praise his holy name. I don't want to thank him, my friends, for what he has done, but I thank him every now and then for what he haven't done. If, if some things I thank him because I'm glad he didn't do it to me. If he did what I just what, what should have had, I wouldn't be here this morning. So I thank him for not doing giving me what some of you said, I want God to give me just, no, 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 no. I want to give me all the mercy I, he has to give on me. I need his mercy and his joy. I thank him today for all what he has done. Some people sit in church and they make you believe that they lived on 1916 Holy Boulevard for 40 years. They make you believe that they have been riding down Silk and gold avenue. They haven't did nothing in their lives, so they don't have to worry about nothing. They're lying. You don't have to listen here. You don't have to go to the gambling house. You don't have to drink no liquor. You don't have to steal. You don't have to do any of those things or lie. But every now and then there's some stuff that comes up in you, you don't tell nobody. Like a man lied to me once and he said, Well, I don't let Women don't get my mind thrown off. I keep myself together. I said, that's good. I said, that's good. I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 50. I said, well, you, you, you're talking to somebody that you understand. There's no man 50 years old that no woman had never pulled him away from where he was. I didn't say he went. I said, but she pulled him. See, a real man, help me, Jesus, a real man, a real man, I'm talking about a, whatever a size he is. If he's just a real man, that's something in a man. And if a woman doesn't attract or doesn't bother him no kind of way, that man is dead. <laughs> How in the name of God you going to serve a God that I know? God made us to be attractive to somebody. And I'm attracted to a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman. Okay, what you said? You, you, you said, brother, 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 brother William, we are changing time. That's you. Time will never change that much. When I get so I can't see, I feel. Yes, sir. Don't, don't try to tell me that God is changing like that. He's not changing. We are the one changing. And while I'm on the, let me tell you, the Supreme Court, the governor, and anybody else will never get me to believe they supersedes God. There's nobody like the God I know. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they write. I don't care what kind of law they pass. There is a God. And his name is Jesus. Somebody said, well, you know, Brother Pastor, you got to be careful now that they'll cut you off of the air. I, I, I wasn't born on the air. Help me, Jesus. Anybody will tell you that. And me and the reason a lot of people don't know what, they don't know what to have. Give me that light again. You, if you don't know what you have, you'll say anything and do anything. Let me just... How many of you all see? 
You see, how many of y'all see this light? Do you see the power where it's coming from? You don't see the power? Is that right? You don't see the power? But you see what? Well, you don't have to see Jesus to know he exists. Let me tell you, the last time I heard, there's nobody ever built a ladder to go to the sky and change it from being blue. Nobody. The last time I heard, a goat was still a goat and a sheep was still a sheep. The last time I heard, I don't have time to go there. I have to come back. Brother, 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 brother Pastor, brother, brother Pastor, brother Pastor, you, you, you are from the old school. That's right. Let me tell you, I've got to say something about that old school. A young lady graduated from college about five years ago, and she said to her mother, she said, I'm leaving Sacramento because it's too small for me. And uh, she criticized her mother from old school. She said, Mama, you, you keep telling me stuff that's, that's used to be. And her mother is 60 years old. She was then. And her mother was a retired employee for the state. Now, she's retired, drawing her living what she's worked for. Now, listen carefully. The mother had went to, back to school and got a master's and her teacher's credentials, but she's from old school. The daughter didn't even have a car. My Lord. My Lord. And the mama was driving a jag. The daughter didn't have a house. She was living in the mama's house. Be careful, you young smart addicts talking about old school. Be careful. Let me, let me tell you, this. this is really old school. My mama took some ham bone and cooked some black-eyed peas. And they are better than when you cook them with ham. It wasn't the bones of the peas. It was that she stirred them with the thanks of God. Thank you, I got something to cook. Don't ever forget where you're coming from. Right. Some of y'all make folks believe you've been born in California all your life. Some of y'all just didn't make it. And you're just making it now. Right. But there's somebody from old school. Tell it, tell it, tell it. They know where they came from. Well, let's move here. Where to praise? Where are we to praise God? In the some I won't be able to finish it today, but I give you just enough for you to remember. Verse number one in Psalm 150 yes, begins with a bang. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuaries. Praise him in his mighty heavens. The word used here for the Lord is Jehovah, yes. which means the self-existence and eternal one. Yes, sir. Church, the psalmist then shifts to the focus to another name and call him God of El. In Hebrew, which means strong and mighty. Yes, sir. We are to praise the eternal strong and mighty in his sanctuary, which is a reference to the temple where God used to dwell. Since Jesus died and rose again, God now tabernacles with his people, chosen not to dwell in buildings. We are his temple and should therefore live our life an implication of what that mean. While God does not reside in the auditorium, he does reside within us. That's why you can't get away talking about folks, running folks down when you think you're by yourself 
Because now the Holy Ghost lives in you if you are saved. So he knows what you are doing and it will return someday. Church, since Jesus, I tell you, since Jesus lives on the inside of the Holy Spirit, the call to praise also is evidence to the mighty heaven. Thank God today. There's nobody like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so verse 1 answers the question, where are we to praise him? We are to do it everywhere. Verse 6 gives us the answer to the question. Why are we to praise him? Well, I'm glad you asked. Why are we to praise God? Well, we call, my friends, to rave about God for at least two reasons. First, we praise him for what, my friends, for what he does. We see this in the first part of verse number two. Praise him for his acts of power. This is the theme of many of the psalms. Church, the phrase, act of power, carries with it the idea of God as a champion because of his victory he has already won. His acts of power are displayed in creation and in our own lives as we enjoy the benefits of his grace forgiveness and mercy. Some of you have great reasons to praise the Lord for some recent way in which he has demonstrated his acts of power in your life. You've seen him resolve a relationship giving you victory over sin. And my friends, renewing your health and answering your specific prayer. Whatever the request may have been, you have praised him today for what he has done in your life and you owe him some praise. But we also to praise him for who he is in the second part of verse number two, praise him for his surpassing greatness. This is especially evidence of the last group of praises in the psalm. Psalm 145 and 3 says, Great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised. His greatness is one can't be fathomed. Psalm 147 and 5, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limits. Church, when we praise God for who he is, we are recognizing his surpassing greatness or as the Hebrew indicates for his muchness, his greatness, and his abundant magnitude. I tell you, name me somebody that is worthy as God. You say, well, I belong to the Republican Party and and they're trying to save money. They're trying to save the country. Well, they're going to all die soon. And who's going to save you? Well, I belong to the Democratic Party. They're more liberal. That's right. They're more liberal. But they'll be gone also. But there is one that's not going nowhere. His name is Jesus. How do we praise him? As I move to the next section in verse 3 through 5, we learn how to praise God. Let's take a look at how they praise him. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyrics. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the flute. Praise him with the clashing of the cymbal. Praise him with the resounding cymbal. The Israelites used three types of music instruments. Friends, wind and strain and percussion. And all three are used in the peninsula of the praise of Psalm 150. And then our number Psalm 150 and verse number 6 sums it up. And it says somewhere, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that God has given breath 
take the time and praise the Lord. Well, you said, I, that's not my thing to praise him. No, it's not your thing, but it ought to be your life. Well, the reason I stopped this morning to tell you that I praise him, he's been mighty good. Not just good, but mighty good. He's the only one that brought me through when I thought I was lost. He's the only one that looked beyond my faults and saw my need. He's the only one that lifted me up when I was down. He's the only one placed my feet on solid ground. He's the only one that gave me what I needed. He's the only one that didn't give me what I should have had. He's the only one that keeps me going when I don't feel like going. He's my peace. He's my joy. He's my everlasting hope. There's nobody like Almighty God. I got to praise him. He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting father. I tell you, there's nobody, nobody worthy. Nobody worthy like Almighty God. I tell you, I'm going to praise him until the day I die. He's the last one. He's the last one. When everybody else thought I would never make it, he's the last one. Came along and he said, you'll be all right. Yes, sir. I've been told by three doctors that I was going to die and all of them are dead and I'm still walking. Yes, sir. I'm still walking. Yes, sir. Don't you tell me I don't have nothing to praise him for. Yes, I owe him. I owe him. Yes, I owe him yes, some praise. Stand on your feet. Hey. Let's give God some praise. Hey. Let's worship God. Let's worship him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise his name. Praise his name. He's good. I tell you, he's good. There's nobody like him. Where would I be? Where would I go? What could I do? Without Almighty God. Thank you. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for forgiving me of my sin. Thank you for the joy. The joy that I now have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I tell you, he's worthy. Yes, sir. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I want to. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. I, uh, I talk to all kinds of people all over this country. Somebody's always asking questions. A gentleman said, I'm old and I'm being mistreated. What would you do? What would you do if you were being mistreated? He was old, 90 years old. I said, but you can still talk. You can still pray. I suggest to you, don't do anything to anybody. Write their name on a slip and find in the Bible the promises that God has made you. And when you find them, write them under. He says, I'll never leave you. Never in America means never. Then he said, not only I won't leave you, I won't forsake you. 
He goes on. Then he says, if I am for you, I'm more than against you. Let them mistreat you. But every day, talk to the master. Every day. He has money. He has plenty of money. I keep telling you, there's going to come a day in your life that your money won't help you. But there is a God will help you. Yes. Last time I heard from him, the people that was mistreating him lost their home. Now, they have nowhere to go. If he was evil and mean, he wouldn't help them. He reached out to help them. That's the kind of God we have. You don't do anything against people because they have done something to you. You love them and lift them up to God. I believe long enough to see God move. It might take, you got to trust him. It might take him a year, two years, three years, four years. But if he gave you a promise, he'll keep it. And the only reason we don't know that is because we just don't know. And some people are too lazy to find it in the scripture. His promises. Amen. I say this not bragging. I say this humbly. I've been in this church 42 years, three months and seven days and never asked this church to give me money. Never. You know why? Because he, when he called me, I, I heard that in my spirit. If you, if you go and preach, I take care of you. You don't see me worrying about anything. He'll make a way out of no way. In fact, in fact, if you want to tell you the truth, God'll make your en- God will make your enemy throw you something. He'll make your enemy throw you something. And your enemy can't do nothing about it. Now, where's the young man? Okay, see ready? Come to I will even see you. When you're going to open, open the door of the church or extend the invitation, he's going to sing the song for the invitation. Amen. Now, I don't care what you tell me. God is speaking to your heart. Yes. If you listen to him, you can accept him now. Yes. We have counselors here just waiting to help you. Will you come? Okay, young man. Will you come in the back of the main floor? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come today? Will you come? Will you come?
come today. Was born and with yeah. we 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 home. All right, sing it. through Jesus Christ, acceptable for every man, woman, and child. All that has happened, all that has came about, all that I've seen, all that I've been through, I've never lost my praise. We're celebrating 42 years under the anointed leadership of Dr. Ephraim Williams, the watchman who is sounding the alarm. You could be like Nehemiah, beloved, who could uh, who could build with courage in spite of opposition. Now watch this. We could be like people like Dr. Ephraim Williams. Come on, somebody, help me. Who served the church faithfully. Amen, somebody. And y'all like to say it all the time. Didn't have a scandal. You didn't see his name out there with some I wish somebody would get that today we didn't hear how he tried to do this and didn't know he served God faithfully you can't continue to stay where you are 
How you gonna get mad at the preacher? How you gonna get mad at the pastor? Because the pastor is challenging you to stop shacking up, challenging you to stop lying, challenging you to stop living like you living. Well, it is his job to challenge you. He's not challenging you because he thinks he's better than you. He's challenging you because you're living below the level that God has called for you. And he says to you, I know that you got better in you than that. You're bigger than that. His, his being, his, his essence is that of always encouraging you just to hang on. Uh, doesn't, doesn't really have to say anything. And I, I'm, I'm awestruck by the fact that when Dr. Williams enters a room, uh, whatever was in there just settles down. He, I, I say this carefully, that I, I, I even think the devil's scared of him. <laughs> but when you got a God who can handle anything, you don't have to worry about it. Even if your brook dries up, you don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about the brook. Focus on the God who can bring the rain and put some more water in your brook. We are giving honor to God by celebrating the man of God, September 13th and 22nd. It will be a time of celebration with four anointed and spirit-filled pastors to speak into your life. Mark your calendar. And I'm thankful today that not only did we see him serve God faithfully, but if you were looking close enough, you watched him suffer faithfully. He suffered with his head up. He suffered with his hand in God's hand. He suffered through some hardships, but he never lost his faith. When the storm is over, you can stand up straight. That's why I said there is. Gave me. You are faithful. 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 You are faithful